Hi, I'm Allison Langen from EMC's Data Protection and Availability Division. Over the next few minutes, I'll be reviewing with you an exciting new data domain feature, Secure Multi-Tenancy, an industry first which enables large enterprises and service providers to offer data protection as a service with data domain in a private or public cloud. With Secure Multi-Tenancy, a data domain system can logically isolate data and restrict each tenant's visibility and read-write access to only their data. In addition, Secure Multi-Tenancy provides management and monitoring by tenant to enable chargeback, trending, and other reporting. Secure Multi-Tenancy is built into the data domain operating system with no software option required and is available for, for all supported backup, archiving, and enterprise applications. Let's dig a little deeper into what a deployment using secure multi-tenancy would look like. Here, you have either a large enterprise looking to deploy data protection as a service in a private cloud, or a service provider deploying in a public or hybrid cloud. First, you have two data domain systems and two tenants. Each tenant may be a different department for a large enterprise or a completely different customer for a service provider. Now, in the provider's environment, you have a data domain administrator who acts as the landlord. She is responsible for setting up the tenant units and their associated M trees across all data domain systems and assigning them to the tenant admin and users. Let's look at exactly what the landlord does. First, she sets up the tenant units and the associated M trees for tenant A. Notice that a tenant may have multiple tenant units across data domain systems. Next, she sets up the tenant units and M trees for tenant B. In addition to the data domain admin, there are two new roles shown here to support secure multi-tenancy in the DDoS 5.5. The first is the tenant user, and here each tenant has their own tenant user. This would most likely be the backup or storage administrator in that environment, who will only be able to view his or her own data in the cloud. The tenant user role is for monitoring of logical capacity, streams performance, and replication status as a few key examples. The landlord assigns the tenant users access to only their tenant units, which provides administrative isolation. Data access isolation is provided at the M tree level by protocol specific mechanisms. For example, with DDBoost, you can now assign a separate DDBoost user for each M tree. All of this provides logical secure isolation, ensuring that each tenant user can only access his or her own data. This enables providers to share protection storage infrastructure across multiple tenants, so they can spread costs across multiple customers and enable users to move from a CapEx to an OpEx model. Finally, the tenant admin's role is based around one or more tenant units he can view. He is likely the backup or storage administrator in the provider's environment and will focus on reporting and metering at the tenant level. This is a true differentiator for data domain, no one else offers this capability. Let's dig into that bit a little deeper. When we look at the various cloud use cases and deployment models, what can data domain now support? Traditionally, data domain had been focused mostly on the replicated backup use case. But with secure multi-tenancy, they can now address more use cases across large enterprises and service provider environments. First is local backup. For a large enterprise, this means hosting a local backup for multiple business units or departments. For a service provider, this means they are hosting the customer applications as well as data protection and need to logically isolate customers' data on site. Next is replicated backup. For a large enterprise, this is likely to protect multiple remote sites that have a small local data domain system and each one replicates into the main data center. For a service provider, this is what we refer to as DR as a service, where the customer has a local data domain system on site and replicates to the service provider site, usually because they do not have their own DR facility. Finally, is remote backup for a large enterprise. This is most likely protecting multiple remote offices that do not leverage local backup, so they back up over the WAN to a data domain at the main data center. In a service provider environment, this would be backup as a service, where customers back up from their sites over the WAN to the service provider's facility. Now, with broad support across all cloud deployment models for data protection, data domain systems are truly cloud ready, the only protection storage in the industry to offer this capability. 
For more information on data domain systems, please visit emc.com/slash data domain. Thank you for watching.